Hello everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone is having a good day so far or if you're catching this at the end of your day, I hope you had a great day. I hope yesterday was fantastic too. Um, so this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. This is not love or career or science specific. This is just a general reading, okay? So it may or may not resonate with everyone. Uh, well, it's not going to resonate with everyone. We can say that. <laughs> um, but this may be something that has already happened. This may be something that you're going through right now or may not be anything for you at all. But that's okay. Even if... You know, you don't quite resonate with the reading. You're more than welcome to stay and hang out with us. Maybe there's something that you might get out of it, yeah? All right, so let's just get straight to it, guys. Okay. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, um, so... Uh, like I said, energy is a fluid, yeah, so this doesn't have to resonate today, okay? This could be a general energy for the day, for the week, for the month, who knows? But just take it as it resonates, okay? And leave what doesn't. All right, Wednesday, December 5th. I'm hearing, I heard a new era um, as I was channeling the energies. So that could be a specific message for some people. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of major shifts ha happening within um, our lives. You know, a lot of people are changing jobs, uh, changing you know homes. Um, there are a lot of major changes happening, um, and that's definitely a theme for today. I would say. Let's see. I'm seeing pink for unconditional love, so there's a lot of support. This universe is really supporting all of, uh, all of us right now. Um, this is a good thing. Let's see, December 5th. Okay, one last shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. Whoops. Ooh. I'm going to leave it like that then. <laughs> Let's see what we've got, guys. Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. Page of Cups. Okay, there's something else underneath the Page of Cups. But the Page of Cups has been coming out a lot um, between last week and then now today. Okay, we're going to read these first, and then we'll see what we have. Page of Cups and the Empress. All right. So, yes, definitely a brand new era is starting. Okay, with the Page of Cups and the Empress. Um, so, okay, what the universe is saying right now is basically what we have on our hands this month is a time to dream, um, a time to manifest. This is also a time for rest, they're saying. Uh, with the Empress and the Page of Cups here, this is definitely time to dream up some new plans, to get some new action or new 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 employment opportunities, new business opportunities, new relationship opportunities, something like that. To really get that going, get that off the ground. But what I mean by off the ground is to really start focusing on it, honing in on it, taking the time to relax and feel your way into it, okay? Uh, December is really a very restful period. I mean, I'm personally trying to take it pretty easy in the month of December. Um, 
you know, I'll still be doing readings, but, and if personal readings come through, you know, I'll pick, I'll, t I'll do some of them. But, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to take it easy this month, and so, I, for me personally, that gives me an opportunity to really plan for the future, for when I, you know, get back into business come, like, say, January. Um, and so that's what we have right now. This is the period of dreaming, of taking, taking your childhood fantasies and maybe even, you know, putting some serious thought or planning behind them. You know, if there's something that you've always wanted to do in your life and you never really had the courage, you never really allowed yourself to do so, now would be the time to take advantage of that and say, what can I actually do about this? Can I make this into a real thing, you know? And I would totally say go for it. Yeah, yeah, I would totally say go for it. Look, Ace of Pentacles is underneath the deck, okay? There's a brand new start here. There's a new opportunity at hand. You have the opportunity to dream up and manifest and attract a new system, a new way for yourself, yeah? I'm sorry, guys. Give me a second. I want to open my blinds here. Ever since... Hold on. So, as some of you know, I changed my system around, like I, 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 I changed my angle. And so because of that, now I, I forget to open my blinds in the morning <laughs> because it's not the, quite the same angle. But anyway, okay, so they're open now <laughs> so I can watch the sunrise. All right, so this is a time to plan, a time to dream, a time to manifest. And this is not the type of manifestation that in which you go after it and you take serious action. This is the type of manifestation where you sit back and you allow it to come to you. You allow yourself to match, to align with the vibration. That is the energy of the Empress, okay? The Empress doesn't really have to do much. She just aligns with it and it comes to her. And the Page of Cups here, this is a card of the Dreamer. <clears throat> Could be reconciliation also, um, but it's right now in this situation, it's the Dreamer, okay? Let's see what else we have for Wednesday, no, up oh, December 5th, excuse me, Wednesday, December 5th, Spirit. What else do we have for today? Thank you so much, Spirit. Wednesday, December 5th, we've got the Three of Wands. All right. <coughs> there we go, there we go. The Ten of Cups, the Five of Cups. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Underneath the deck, wow, underneath the deck is the Ten of Wands. All right, so there are definitely some burdens that need to be released, that are being released. <coughs> but you also have the Ten of Cups here, coming out with the Five of Cups, all right? What else we have? The Three of Wands, <laughs> the Three of Wands, the Four of Swords, and the Lovers. Okay. So, this is going to go up here. He's going to go down here. All right, guys. So it looks like, put this here so you can see. It looks like there really is a brand new cycle that's starting, okay? Some of you are still carrying some burdens. You need to release them. And for some of you, this dreamer period that we're in will allow you to work out how to release those burdens, okay? And that's where I'm getting the energies of, you know, thinking about what it is you truly want to do in your life. Is it what you're doing right now? Well, if not, how can you change that? Okay. And like I said, this is a very restful period. Very restful period with the Four of Swords. Now, it's also a manifestation period with the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands, in the Three of Wands, you have put forth the investment, you have put forth the effort, and now you're waiting on the return for that investment. Well, here you go. Here's the Empress. That's the Empress energy too. Aligning with it and manifesting it through alignment. Okay? You've already done quite a bit of work so far. Um, and now it's time and now it's time to let your manifestations align with you or align with your manifestation so that you can bring that in, okay? We have the lovers here. The lovers is about a choice, okay? For some, for a lot of you, this is vice or virtue. 
Um, this is your own choices over that of someone else's. Um, oh, and I'm being reminded of something right now. It does look like this woman in this card is pregnant. And we have the Empress here, which talks about pregnancy. We also have the Ten of Cups. Well, the Ten of Cups and the Page of Cups. So we really could be talking some pregnancy for some people. And I know there's, there, there's a, I know of at least one person who... Um, watches the channel regularly. Shout out to you, boo. You are pregnant. Congratulations. Um, but this could be, you know, for you specifically, this could be you planning ahead, okay, for your, for, for your pregnancy, for your child. Um, some of you might actually want to be getting pregnant. But this is, with the lovers here, this is also the balance between masculine and feminine. The balance within. This is your own internal relationship with yourself, your own union, okay? And so through that union, you are able to better align with yourself and better align with what it is you truly want. Now, many of us, there's a deeper message here in the form of the Five of Cups with the Ten of Cups. There is an, uh, there, this is an energy of a missed opportunity for some, um, which is turning into a catalyst to really align with what you truly want in life with, for, between the Five of Cups and the Ten of Cups. The Five of Cups being regret, loss, um, shame, guilt, sadness, crying over spilled milk, you know, for lack of a better term, mourning. But what I'm the key word that I'm getting with the five of cups right now is regretting missing an opportunity. Like the chance is long is long gone at this point. Or maybe it might feel that way. Okay. It might feel that way. Um, and it might look that way, but the universe says that it's that's not necessarily true. Anything is possible. Now, I don't say that to get anybody's hopes up. But that's just a that's just sheer fact. When it comes to the to the universe, you never know what the universe is going to drop into your lap at any given moment. It could be something that you know you had wished for, you had wanted for a, a long time ago, maybe even as a kid, and now all of a sudden, boop, you've got it, and you're like, oh shit, what do I do with this now? <laughs> you know that kind of thing. That's basically how the universe works. But what I'm really seeing here between the five and the ten of cups is using, I mean, you're doubling, you're, you're doubling your energies here. You're going from the five to the ten, okay? You're using the regret, the fear, the shame, the anxiety, the, the, the pain, the tears of whatever you're mourning, okay? You're doubling that and going straight to the ten. Okay, the five is about change. Fives are also a, a numbers of challenge. They're pretty challenging energies, but that's because they bring change. And it's through this challenge that you are able to step up your game manifestation, manifestation-wise speaking, in, in terms of manifestation, and really align yourself with this Ten of Cups here. This is like the ultimate lesson of learning through, this is a, a, an extension or a, an a, um. What's the word I'm looking for? A representation, I guess you could say, of learning through contrast, okay? So I would really advise everyone to rest as much as possible right now. You know, especially with all the energetic downloads and the waves and the shifts that are happening. It's really, this is really a good time to rest and recalibrate with the Four of Swords, okay? That's what I'm going to call this video, this, this reading today, Rest and Recalibration. For some of you, with the Ten of Wands that's over here underneath the deck, for some of you, you know, you recently have released a lot of burdens from your life. And now it's almost like you have, it's vacation time. Vacation all I ever wanted. Vacation had to get away. <laughs> that was flat. <laughs> anyway, but y'all get it, okay? Now, if you haven't released 
many burdens right now, what the universe is saying is you absolutely have an opportunity to, okay? Now, don't go rushing at it. You know, take your time, do it wisely, which is what the Four of Swords says. If you need to slowly, piece by piece, wand by wand, maybe even inch by inch, finger by finger, prying each individual finger off of that wand one at a time, then go ahead. Because ultimately, you'll get there if you keep it up, right? Okay. Cool. So let's do some clarification now. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the line. I'm going to start at the top and work my way to the bottom. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clarify the Page of Cups and the Empress. One more shuffle, and then we'll get started. Okie dokie, here we go. Page of Cups and the Empress, please, Spirit. Please cut five. Page of Cups. Okay. <laughs> so we've got the Nine of Cups so far. That's pretty freaking awesome. And that's exactly what I was talking about with the ooh, with the nine of swords, though. Um, but this is what I was talking about here with the page of cups being the dreamer, um, and, and combined with the energies of the empress. This is a perfect time to really start manifesting your dreams. But we have some nine of swords. We have some whoa. We have some fear. We have some anxiety around this. Underneath the deck is the knight of swords. Now this could, this could be a good thing. Um, Okay, now the Knight of Swords is Gemini energy. Gemini loves to travel. Gemini also loves to communicate, loves to go from this, this place to the next, can be seen as somewhat of a social butterfly, um, just flittering, flitting around to a bunch of different flowers, which is not a bad thing, okay? In this, in this sense, this is interesting because I'm seeing the Knight of Swords as a very beneficial, a very helpful energy for you because we're talking about dreaming. We're talking about the mentality right now, okay? So um, this, is, this would be a really good energy to help you see things clearly, to help you get to the bottom of things. If you're trying to manifest something new, you know, this will help you explore your options, this type of energy. Now, we do have the Nine of Swords and the Nine of Cups. These are, number one, it's two nines, okay? So we definitely have some endings at play right now. And so many of us, uh, what I'm getting here is that we're in the very beginning stages of these endings, okay? Completion is on its way. Completion is actually in the works between the Ten of Wands and the Ten of Cups. But we're in the very beginning stages of these endings, and that's allowing, or that's causing some anxiety, some fears. Are you going to be enough? Are you going to have enough? Is there is the situation going to be abundant enough? Okay, the Nine of Swords is all about fear and illusion. So understand that you have the opportunity for wish fulfillment, for your dreams to be realized. You just need to keep the fears at bay. Understand, especially with this Knight of Swords energy, understand exactly what it is that is causing fear and what it is that is causing truth and relief, okay? And let go of anything that's causing any fear. Let's see what else we have here. We have three more cards that came out. Wow, that's interesting. My, my, my. We have the Three of Swords. We have the Three of Wands. Again, because the Three of Wands came out. And we have the Magician in Reverse. That's an interesting message. Please give me a moment to... 
to think about that because wow the three of swords the three of wands and the magician that the magician came out reversed here It's almost as if there are some energies of some people. Wow. Some people are manifesting through sacrifice. There is an energy. At, uh, wow. There is an energy of some people, there are some individuals here that have actually sacrificed some sort of relationship in order to get what they want with the Three of Wands and the Three of Swords, also the Magician in reverse. The Magician, I mean, the Magician is a manipulative energy to begin with anyway, okay? Because the, the Magician uses the tools at his disposal, the tools, which are the tools of the universe to manipulate the energies to manifest, okay? So at its very base, it's manipulative anyway. But that depends, but once you go deeper into the situation, then we'll see if that's manipulative in like, say a narcissistic way or an abusive way, or if it's manipulative in the sense that, you know, we're just manifesting. But with the magician in the reverse, it's negative manipulation, selfish manipulation. Three of Swords, Three of Wands. To me, that is a message of Three of Swords. Someone was backstabbed, heartbroken. Um, I mean, it's almost, it's almost a card of death here because you have this person that is stabbed in the heart three times. I mean, I really don't think the chances of survival after being stabbed in the heart three times are all that high, okay? And combined with the magician in reverse, I'm getting an energy of somebody took an opportunity to almost like steal the life force out of something so that they can get something that they wanted here with the three of wands. This is like really, this is really out there, <laughs> you guys. This is really, really out there. But... I want to I, I want to pull a little bit more from this, but it's almost as if someone fought back with the Knight of Swords energy. I just want to let's just clarify a little bit more, please, Spirit. I just don't quite let's get a final clarification here before the page of cups and the pentacles, please, Spirit. There we go. Oh, what? The Six of Swords in reverse and the Queen of Cups is underneath the deck. Okay. Wow. I, I'm not going to lie, guys. This is a really abstract and obscure message here. I don't even... <laughs> so what I'm seeing is an energy of manipulation. Just going to throw that out there. There's an energy of manipulation here. Now, someone... I'm hearing sacrificial lamb. So there was some sort of situation in which the energies of a relationship were being sacrificed and usurped in order to get what someone wanted. And this was for selfish means, okay? Basically robbing Paul to pay Peter when you didn't even need to rob Paul. You just saw it as a good idea, or someone did to get some sort of return on an investment here with the three of wands. Now, 
But I'm also seeing at the same time, especially with the Six of Swords in reverse here, someone decided to put an end to that and to stop going in that direction to a certain extent. Six of Swords in reverse is about, could be stagnancy, feeling stuck, feeling blocked from moving forward. And this could be the person that was stolen from. Almost like you're trapped. Now this could also be, okay, so ultimately what I'm seeing here is someone is coming out of this situation. It's almost like you're getting a second chance. With the Queen of Cups here, this is the intuition, this is emotion, this is keeping your, this is discernment, right? This is like keeping your situation under wraps, not really talking to anyone about it not really showing your emotions in the situation, keeping them close to your chest, keeping your cards hidden. I'm seeing two things with this top scenario. I'm seeing the person that did some sort of sacrificing. And I'm, this, I'm not talking about literally like someone was sacrificed, but I'm talking like the energies of some sort of situation were sacrificed in order to move forward. But this was in a manip manipulative way. Okay? If that makes sense. And now the, the other end of the situation, the other party in the relationship of whom was basically the energies were sacrificed, now is moving forward in a brand new way. And the person that did some sort of sacrificing is stuck with the Six of Swords in reverse. It's like they created some really negative karma for themselves and now they have to stay there and play it out. Whereas this individual represented by the Queen of Cups is moseying her way out of there because she's learned her lesson, she or he. Um, and wow, I'm, I'm telling you guys, this is a really, out, this message is really out there right now, but I'm just giving you what it, what's coming through. And now there is an energy of like this, the, the, the situation has come to an end with the Nine of Swords and the Nine of Cups. And the completion is in the process of happening. Okay? We do have the Ten of Cups here. Here is that completion. Here is that completion, the Ten of Cups. But there is energy of burdens still kind of in the way with the Ten of Wands here. Those burdens need to be released. And here are here's the fear of the aspect. Uh, of this, the, the fear aspect of the situation. Someone feels like they're never really going to be able to be free of this. Some, some feel like they are trapped in the situation when in fact they are not. They have the energies of the Page of Cups and the Empress behind, their, behind them in order to move forward. And we have forward movement here, okay? We have someone is, is waiting for a return on the investment. Okay, just like this person up here, the manipulator is re waiting on a return on an investment, but they kind of dug themselves a pretty deep hole with the Six of Swords. It's almost as if someone has recreated some sort of life, uh, a past life karmic situation in which th that they weren't supposed to do this, this time, and yet they did it anyway. They fell trapped they fell victim to it to the manipulative energies that caused them to or led them to recreate this cycle man that's obscure so let's get into the three of wands four of swords and the lovers so this would be the person that is moving forward that is in this empress and page of cups energy let's see what we've got here three of wands four of swords and the lovers please clarify spirit thank you so much Okay, see, look at that. The Ace of Pentacles. Okay. There's the Ten of Wands again. So that's definitely what is standing in the way. Okay, the Ten of Wands. It's, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I was just thinking, wow, I'm getting this message of like this karmic energy, but I don't see the Wheel of Fortune here. Well, there it is. The Wheel of Fortune. Underneath the deck is the Six of Cups. Some of you could be gaining a, a brand new start 
with a brand new soulmate here. You've got the Ace of Pentacles. You've got the Six of Cups. This is all clarifying the lovers. I knew it. The tower is right there. And here we have the Knight of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, and also the King of Wands. Okay, Ace of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, King of Wands. Someone new is coming in to step into the reality here, okay? Um, we have the Ten of Wands and the Tower. Okay, so, well, here, I'm actually going to do it this way because this is how the narrative is running for me. The, the, the Ten of Swords, I'm sorry, the Ten of Wands, the Tower, and the Eight of Swords. All right, so this, these are the burdens here. This is the entrapment. There it is, right there. Ten of Wands, Eight of Swords, the Tower. This is the entrapment. These are the burdens. This is what someone feels like. They're never going to get out of this situation. But then the Tower comes and strikes everything down and changes everything for the better with the Wheel of Fortune, okay? And finally, shh, fucking right. Fucking right. The Fool is the last card to clarify this row of the Three of Wands, the Four of Swords, and the Lovers. So this is really why some of us really need to take advantage of this restful period. Because look at all of this change, you guys. Look at all of this changing energy. Look at that. Look at that. The Ace of Pentacles, the Fool, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Tower. I mean, shit, y'all. That's some big change right there, okay? Now, some of you really feel, I'm putting that on top of the lovers here because the lovers is like, let me do this so you guys can see a little more. There we go, that's better. Um, the lovers is helping bring that in because it's a balance of, love, of masculine and feminine. It's the union within that is bringing forward this major change, which ultimately is going to bring someone new into someone's life, okay? A representation, a representation of the Divine Masculine, in some cases, with the King of Wands. King of Wands, uh, the Knight of Cups, the Six of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, Ace of Pentacles. This really could be someone brand new in your life. It is entirely possible that there is a ch that, that a changed man or a changed woman will return from your past. Uh, but that's not likely. In the sense of this reading, that's not likely because that person is wrapped up in this karmic energy here. You are the one that is changing the karma for yourself and moving on to something brand new. Okay, the tower and the wheel of fortune and the fool is saying to me, you realized the karmic pattern or someone realized the karmic pattern and decided to put the kibosh on that. Okay, now here's that realization, the eight of swords and the ten of wands. Okay, this is someone feeling like they're never going to be able to be released from this situation. But you see here, you or this person that is, that is changing the karmic cycle recognized that all you had to do was cut yourself out. Because that's the beauty of the Eight of Swords. You have the power to cut yourself out at any moment. You have the power to say enough is enough of this ridiculous karmic cycle and I'm moving forward. And you basically, and you drop all those wands. All right? So now, so now we basically, we get to the final outcome. We're going to call this the outcome here, because this is the progression of the story. You had an idea. You did some emotional, uh, you went down into the emotional depths. You connected with the abundance of the universe through the energies of the empress. And now you're manifesting something new in the face of whatever bullshit happened here, right? So your final outcome would be going from the Five of Cups to the Ten of Cups. I mean, shit, y'all. Talk about manifesting extraordinaire, right? So let's clarify that now, please, spirit. One more they're saying. One more pull. Just perfect. The moon. And look at that. The page of cups again. Underneath the deck is the knight of wands. So someone is really moving forward quite quickly. 
All right, and this is inspirational, uh, spiritually inspired, okay? All right, so we've got the Page of Cups and the Moon here. We have the King of Pentacles. We've got, oh, the Ten of Cups again. Holy shit. And the Four of Pentacles. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, please excuse the pause. I'm just trying to figure out how this flows here. I feel like the Four of Pentacles goes with the Ten of the King of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups here, because there's an energy of there's an energy of holding on to something, okay, and I really feel like this is the energy of holding on to you know, who your ideal partner would be, who your ideal king of pentacles would be. When positively aspected, the king of pentacles is the father figure. He's grounded, he's stable, he's financially secure, he's well, he's very well manifested, um, he has a good career, or he's making good money to support a family. He's commitment oriented. And I think what this what this is saying here with the Four of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, and the Ten of Cups, this is you not losing sight of that ideal partner. This is you not letting go of the fact that someone that can align with this desire within you truly does exist. Okay? Especially in the face of all of this fuckery and tomfoolery that went on in the past that you're now coming out of. We have the Page of Cups again with the Moon. So this is real dreamer energy, okay? This is using, and you have here the moon cycles on the moon, but you have the full moon on this page of cups. So this is manifesting through the energies of the full moon or of the moon cycle, okay? We have a new moon coming, I believe on the 7th. The new moon is... Um, good for manifesting, drawing in. The full moon is good for releasing. So some of you may want to, okay, see now this is, this is a thing for me, a friend of mine a while ago, actually not a while ago, but at this last full moon, she mentioned that I should do a ritual, you know, write down what it is that I truly want in a partner and, you know, do whatever I do, like burn it, whatever under the full moon. And I was like, you know what, I'm totally gonna do that, but I never got around to it. Number one, I, I just, I procrastinated and then forgot. But number two, the full moon was on Thanksgiving and so I got wrapped up in all that and didn't really even remember that I had even wanted to do a ritual until it was too late, kinda. It was the next day, I could have still done it, but it would've been better to do it on the actual day. So now here, this is influencing me to say, and also what I wanted to do was do that, I actually probably wanna do that under a new moon because that's going to help attract that to me. So here we go, we have that opportunity. So use the moon cycles, okay? I'm going to do my best to remember to do that. And I believe the new moon is on the seventh, which would be Friday. Ooh. Okay. All right, guys. But this is really good. I mean, we're coming out of a pretty difficult period. Please use this time to rest and recalibrate, recuperate. Because this is going, the more you can recharge your battery, the more that you can get into, you know, your own flow, the better. Okay? Really use this time to align. Um, take the advice from the Empress here. Use this time to align with what it is you wish to, you desire to manifest. You don't really have to do much seeking other than internally, okay? Where is your alignment, all right? So, Oracle Guidance here for today, Wednesday, December 5th, 2018.
Valentine's Day, December 5th, 2018. Here we go, guys. Woo! There it is. One card for the day. Oh, rabbit. Aw. Okay, one more card. <laughs> Scorpion. Ooh. All right. And I'm going to take this one, too. Underneath the deck is Sea Serpent. My, my, my. And you know what, guys? I'm straight up not even going to lie to y'all. This is how I'm seeing these energies. Rabbit is this person, this manipulator up here. Whereas Scorpion is the energies of whoever is moving forward. Now, at one point, it may have seemed like whoever was being, whoever was represented, whoever, whoever, the manipulator that's represented up here could have had the energies of Scorpion behind them, but the tables have turned. And now the Scorpion has stung this individual or these individuals up here that have been manipulating. I'm going to start with Sea Serpent, which is underneath the deck. This is Spirit. Uh, yeah. All right. Sea Serpent. Healing emotional wounds, expressing desires. The Sea Serpent represents the energy of expression, whether it's emotions, creativity, sensuality, or desire. The Sea Serpent helps us move and direct our energy into a healthy current. When the essence of this card is in balance, we express ourselves creatively and sexually without fear or shame. We know what we desire most. Our hearts are at ease and our relationships are meaningful and enduring. We loosen the grip of self-judgment and we let the cool waters of forgiveness in to heal our wounds. When the energy of the sea serpent is not yet activated, our emotions and creativity are left in the muddy waters. The current of expression stagnates in some areas of our lives and in other places it floods. It's important to remember no matter what the waters of our emotional lives look like, the sea serpent loves us just the same. Like a mother, she wraps herself around us in a gesture of protection. She supports us as we learn to express our true natures. And that definitely goes for both parties here, both the person that was manipulated and the person that was manipulating. Because the person that was manipulated goes, got, allowed themselves to get into that situation because of a lack of understanding of themselves, maybe even a lack of love of, for themselves. Whereas the person that was doing the manipulation was doing so for the same reasons, just it's a mirrored effect. You know what I mean? It's just like flipped. Okay. The Sea Serpent and the Second Chakra. The subtle energy of the Sea Serpent occupies the area of Svadhisthana Chakra. Located deep within the pelvic bowl, this chakra is known as our center of creativity and desire and is associated with the water element. Svadhisthana Chakra is the home of the Divine Mother or Kundalini herself. This is the sacral chakra. Yes. All right. So now... <laughs> now let's read Rabbit. Rabbit, afraid of everything, overwhelmed, frozen. The rabbit loves to remind his friends that someday the eagles will swoop down and eat him. He talks and talks and talks about it so loudly, in fact, that one day the eagle hears and thanks him for the great idea. Rabbit energy is alive when we are scared, most often about the future, and we become our own worst enemy. We spin up a dust cloud of fear and then complain to others that we are lost. Notice your thoughts and words, O oh rabbit. They shape your destiny. When in balance, rabbit is sensitive, a problem solver, and a good listener. When out of balance, rabbit over explains and talks fast. To bring into balance, one must observe a day of silence. So what I was getting as I was reading this card is that um, this is also a past energy rabbit is because for some of us we entered into this situation through what fear law of attraction and focusing on the worst case scenarios thinking to ourselves oh well that's really all i'll ever get blah 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 there really isn't better out there this is settling this is you know attracting something 
through focus on the worst case scenario. And it's that focus on the worst case scenario that would cause someone to settle. And lo and behold, we got stung by the scorpion. So the scorpion isn't, isn't the hawk, but it kind of represents the hawk a little bit. These energies are kind of flowing all over the place. But it's true and it makes sense. Um, please excuse the silence, but I'm channeling here again. But it's just, it's back up to here. With the Three of Swords, the Magician in Reverse, and the Three of Wands, someone is not manifesting this situation again. They've learned their lesson in this. They've learned how they created a worst case scenario theme for themselves, and now they're moving forward with much more enlightenment at hand, okay? So let's read Scorpion. Because actually, Scorpion feels like a really good, helpful energy in this situation. <laughs> depending on depending on where you are, of course, which position you're in. But if you're in the if you if you've come out of this wiser, then you're you have the upper hand here energetically, and so Scorpion is actually your friend. Scorpion, passionate, competitive tends towards isolation. The scorpion is a passionate and de determined creature. Their career is very important to them, as are a few select friends. Sometimes the scorpion's heat festers and they focus on an unresolved event from the past, usually a situation where they were left feeling, quote, burned. Scorpion says, it is time to come clean about your feelings so everyone can heal and you can get back to your usual fiery but fun self. When in balance, scorpion is wild and free and fierce. When out of balance, Scorpion is jealous, resentful, and unresolved. To bring into balance, one must practice honesty or forgiveness. Yeah, forgiveness is key right now, guys. Forgiveness is definitely key, okay? All right. So now I'm going to close the reading with a... Oh, goodness. All right, so since we're talking about forgiveness, I'm actually going to close the reading with Whispers of Love today, okay? So let's see. Let's see what we get. Spirit is really pushing that I close with whispers of love. So we're going to go with it and see what we get. All right. So closing message for Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. Closing message, please. There we go. Underneath the deck is... Oh, I love you. So this is like a parting gesture, okay, from someone. Could be from both parties involved here. But it's definitely coming from, from the one... Oddly enough, I really feel like it's coming from the one that did most of the manipulation. Okay. We also have, consider your foundation. You are being asked to look how committed you are to love. And we have, get to know each other. Learning to meet another's needs for love is important for a relationship to grow. Now, if you are not trying to reconnect with someone, don't worry about that, okay? Then that message is not for that person. Because I do feel like there is someone new coming for a lot of you, okay? And no one has to be alone if they don't want to be alone. So please don't fall into the trap of, oh, well, I'm never going to find anybody, blah, blah, blah. There's no one out there for me. That's bullshit because there is. <laughs> and, the, and the cards are talking about it. The Lovers, the Knight of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, the Fool, the Ace of Pentacles. You also have the Nine of Cups up here. There's someone new that's coming into the situation for some of us, if that's what you desire. 
So now with that in mind, as this new person comes in, you have consider your foundation and get to know each other, okay? How committed are you to love? If you are committed to love, then you would understand that not everyone is going to be the same. Not everyone is going to treat you the same way, all right? You do have an opportunity to find love here. And it's almost as if the old person is saying to you, look, I'm sorry, and I love you, and I hope you, and I'm, I'm kind of like sending you off with almost a blessing, even though they sacrificed this relationship to get what they desired out of it, to like take the energies and put it towards something else, which is crazy. But that's what I'm seeing here. Now they're like sending you off in your own direction while they have to deal with this bullshit. But now you have a challenge in saying, in like really opening up and getting to know someone else and figuring out, like saying to yourself, okay, how committed are you to really finding love? Because if you are committed to it, then you would have to really release the past, let go of the past, just take it for, as a lesson and move forward with greater understanding. And ultimately, if you really want to get radical with it, ultimately a deeper, firmer belief and understanding about love and a, a firmer a belief in love. Okay? I know it's weird. All of this is like real, this really feels like a stretch <laughs> today, but actually it isn't. When you really think about it, it makes perfect sense. And what we have all been learning about how the universe works and how it's how it conspires to teach us our lessons, to keep us on our paths, this makes perfect sense. It really does. And for those individuals that are up here caught up in this mess, in this manipulative mess, in this karmic cycle for yourself, it's almost as if you all you wanted it to happen this way. Because you just have this greed, or at least this person has just this greed that it's like they're plagued by. It's almost a sickness that they can't seem to find their way out of. And in, in many cases, they really dug themselves even an even deeper grave, which is really unfortunate. But um, to those that resonate with that energy, you know, all is not lost. You have some karmic debts to pay. But all is not lost. You can come out of this and rise up again like the phoenix from the ashes risen. Yes? All right, guys. All right, that's it. <laughs> I was trying to figure out if I was going to pull another card, but not today. We have what we need. All right, so there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope you all have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Bye.